Welcome back to P1. Today we're going to start looking at Unit 4 on graphs and transformations. And in this video we're going to be focusing just on cubic graphs. Now depending on the actual function that we're looking at, a cubic graph can take a few different slightly variations of its form. So it could look very much like this, almost like a tan graph, but probably not quite as steep. So, you know, kind of maybe a bit more, more of a curve. It can also take this kind of form. It could also be touching one of the axes, like the x-axis there, and bouncing off it. So those are the three main ones for positive. And then if we were looking at negative x cubed, so negative cubics, then we'd be looking at kind of going the other way. That's a really bad one there. Okay, so again, you know, they would be the same, just looking at the reverse. Let's have a look at how we go about sketching them. So if I've got this cubic to draw, okay, it's already been factorised for me. And what I want to do is I want to think about where it's going to hit that x-axis. So that is when y equals zero. So when y equals zero, then my three brackets here would equal zero. So that means I've got x equals negative 3, x equals 1, and x equals negative 2 as my three solutions. And these are the points where my graph's going to hit my x-axis. Now, as well as that, I can look at what happens where it hits the y-axis. And this will happen when x is 0. So when x is 0, y would be equal to 3 times minus 1 times 2. So you can see here this is going to be equal to negative 6. And this is what's going to help me sketch my graph. So looking at my graph, it's going to hit at minus 3, minus 2, and positive 1. And then sketching it... is something like this okay and it's going to hit here at negative six as we said so it's quite easy to sketch it's all about just getting roughly the right shape and what i need to think about is what's happening so if it's a positive x cubed so x times x times x is positive x cubed it's going to end going up we're in the positive axis. So as x is increasing, my y is increasing. Okay? If the x cubes are negative, on this side it's going to end going down. And that's how you kind of helps you get the right curve. Okay, let's have a look at another one. So in this one I can see I've got a squared bracket here. So when I think about making my y equals zero, I'm just going to jump straight in with the solutions here. I've got x is minus 2 and x is 3. And what I like to do is I like to think of this as twice because it was squared. Okay, and that's there just to remind me. So when I come to sketch my graph, I can make sure I get it right. So just before we do look at the sketch, let's look at what happens when x is 0. So that's 2 squared minus 3. Okay, so that's what's happening for y, 4 times negative 3, negative 12. Okay, now <clears throat> let's look at our two points, so minus 2 and 3, and obviously we're going to hit on negative 12 here. So remember that it's a positive x cubed, so it's going to end up coming up there, and it's going to start from down the bottom here. Okay. And that's what I need to be thinking about. So I'm starting from the bottom. Now, 
where it hits this minus 2, because it happened twice, there's two of them, instead of crossing the axes, it's going to bounce off. That's what I'm thinking of. And then here it's going to cross at minus 12. So what's happening here is where my square term was, this part is going to hit the axis and bounce off rather than crossing through the axis. Okay, and then that's my graph draw. And finally, let's have a look at what happens when we have one of the brackets cubed. So in this case, I can see that x is going to equal 1 when y is 0, and this is going to happen kind of thrice, three times. Okay, um, and let's also look at where it's going to cross. So when x is equal to 0, y is minus 1 cubed, which is negative 1. So there's some coordinates to help me get started. So I've got x equals 1. And then we're going to cross the y-axis at negative 1. Now, for this one, where it's all 3, it is going to cross my axis, and that is where my turn is going to be. So it's going to look like this. And here we are crossing at negative 1. And that's my three main, diff main types of cubic graphs. The only additional ones now to look at is what happens with a negative x cubed. Mm -hmm. And I'll do one of those just to show you. So here we have our next example. You can see here x times x times that minus x will give me my minus x cubed. Now when y equals 0, my solutions are going to be x is 3, x is negative 2, and x is 1. So when I'm thinking of my sketch, I know it's going to cross at minus 2, 1, and 3. Now additionally, if I look at what happens when I'm finding my constant, that will happen when it's minus 3 times 2 times the 1. So minus 3 times 2 is minus 6 times 1 is still minus 6. So when x equals 0, y would equal minus 6. Now this time, because it's a negative x cubed, I'm going to finish going down towards the larger negative numbers, which means I must start coming from the higher positive numbers. And that's how I always think about starting this, looking at the two ends and what happens there. So we've got here crossing the minus 2 round to go through the 1, back round through the 3 and down. And where across here is negative 6. Now you notice when I did these, I've always left that value on the y axis until last. Okay, and I do that on purpose. I sketch the graph and then I put it on on purpose so that I can see, you know, does it make sense? That It's a negative and it is a negative, so it makes sense. I know I've got the graph right. And that's why I leave it till last, just so I can clearly see whether I've got the graph in the right shape, in the right cross, in the right points, roughly. I'll do one quick example, as sometimes you need to factorise first. So here I can take x outside, leave me x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then I can factorise this to x plus 1, x plus 1. Which is obviously x, x plus 1 squared. So when y equals 0, I can see that x will equal 0, or x will equal minus 1 and this will happen twice, just reminding myself. And when I think of when x equals 0, well, y's got to equal 0 there. So I know it's going to go through the origin.
okay which was kind of obvious because we'd already worked out one of those points anyway so I'm crossing at zero and I'm crossing at negative one sorry I'm not actually crossing at negative one I'm hitting negative one it's a positive x cubed graph so I'm coming from the bottom touching minus one and then I need to make sure I go through this origin and there I have it a little bit more of a x-axis than I needed there and it's all about getting that shape roughly right and all the points where you hit the axes correct just before I put the questions up if you are finding these videos useful please consider subscribing to the channel and hit the bell icon so you get notifications when our next video um, comes live thank you enjoy So first with this one, think about the solutions. So we've got minus 5, minus 2, and plus 3. So we're probably looking at x plus 5, x plus 2, and x minus 3. Now all we need to do is expand my brackets and simplify. So approaching this one, the first thing I need to do is expand all my brackets and then simplify. So we've got, if I look at just these two brackets first, x minus 10 and x squared minus 2x. We've got x cubed minus 2x squared minus 10x squared plus 20x. And then of course I got my plus 12x. So we have x cubed minus 12x squared plus 32x. Now I can factorise x out of all of this. x squared minus 12x plus 32. 4 eighths are 32. they'll also give me that negative 12 so this is it fully factorized so if I'm thinking about y equals 0 or f of x equals 0 in this case x is going to be 0 x is going to be 4 and x is going to be 8 and if I think of what happens when f of 0 I'm finding so when x is 0 then that's going to be also 0 so very very quick sketch here we're crossing at 0 at 4 and at 8 it's a positive x cubed and there we have it